that everybody here knows what digital assets are. Alright, so I know that everybody here knows what digital assets are, so we're going to do a quiz. If that's alright. Um, okay, so what are digital assets? Basically two things. I was ready to, to volunteer. I know you know. What are digital assets? What kind of attributes do digital assets have? Stuff that we can store electronically. Perfect. So binary form or some electronic form. And the second, the electronic form could be a Microsoft Word document stored online. We're not talking about that. Can be transferred. Can be transferred. It represents a form of the binary value. Exactly. So those are the two things: binary format and some sort of a value, right? Right to use off or proceed. Right. So it represents a value. That's a perfect definition. All right, so what types of digital assets are there? More than you know of today. No, I mean general, right? So we're going to move to this side of the room. Real estate. Real estate. Right, it could be a digital asset. It's true. So we're talking about more like the top category that enables real estate to be a digital asset. And those would be securities, digital securities, right? So what else? Services. Services? No. I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of like, in terms of money, like cryptocurrency, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? Our digital assets, right? So those are cryptocurrencies. And then there's other currencies that are, that are there that are, you know, tokens, right? What, what types of tokens are there? You guys know? Security tokens. Security tokens, what else? Utility non -fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens and utility tokens, it's right? It's not tokens. a dirty word, it's an actual. <laughs> Existing, <laughs> existing token, it's true that um, we heard a lot of bad things about them, but they, they might actually be a good tool that was misused. So we have cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. Um, tokens, right? Non, there's non-regulated utility, I, the majority of the ICOs. The minority of the ICOs actually did go to the SEC and got regulated. And then there's also real estate and other types of assets that go in the third category, which is basically using SEC regulation to issue securities, digital securities in the digital form. They're issued on the blockchain, and we're going to learn or maybe recap why blockchain is a good idea for this stuff, right? So, by the way, what's the other term for these security tokens? We just said. Tokens. Token or digital, right? Digital or tokenized securities. We, yeah, we try with this simple people in the industry that are not from job, blockchain. We try to eliminate the jargon and we say digital securities. That's easier to spell. All right. So digital securities. What kind of digital securities are we seeing in the market? Right. So we started with real estate. Right. That's one asset. What other assets do we see now? Yeah, private. Private equity. Perfect. What else? Loans. Loans. Perfect. What right. else? Real estate, no more. Real estate, yes. Art. Art, okay. So that pretty much covers it, what we've seen so far. Uh, private equity, which is any sort of a startup or a fund. Real estate. Now, loans could be a part of any of this, right? You can actually token that. We call them basically debt tokens, or we can actually take loans as an asset and tokenize that. Also commodities. So I've seen commodities starting to get tokenized. And then we have art. So what is tokenization, basically? There are two things that tokenization represents. Number one is digitization. So that's the taking this asset, like a real estate uh, property, and then converting it into a digital form. How do you take a big asset and convert it into like a small digital <laughs> token, right? So how do you do that? There is a legal process. There is a structural process to structure like a um, a special vehicle to do that, and we'll go through all the stages, regulatory and technical, right? And technical is actually issuing a token on the blockchain. Um, and then there's securitization. You actually uh, have to do a process for the token to represent ownership in an asset. What is this process? Well, this is nothing new. It's basically um, setting up a prospectus or a kind of a, a mini prospectus and then going to the regulator and saying, that whoever purchases this security has a stake in either in this in this asset or has uh, a right to get um, dividends or you know part of the revenue from this asset. And then 
these people are entitled to that because we told the SEC so, right? So, if, and if they're not receiving what's entitled to them, then there, there are legal procedures for them uh, to go through. So, why do we need blockchain for this? What's the role of blockchain in tokenization? Any volunteers? Make it transparent. Make it transparent. Um, well, you could technically maybe post like a, a, a Google Doc online. Make it, make it very verifiable. And not make it verifiable. Sure. It's secure. Okay. Uh, what else? To not be tampered. Not be tampered. Security. What else? I'd say like these are like secondary characteristics. Like what is the primary characteristic? I forgot. Let me see. <laughs> okay. So this is the answer. So number one is basically storing digital assets, so security, right? So you don't store them in some Excel file, which is usually what's done with um, some uh, group real estate investments and crowdfunding and so on, sort of a, a database where somebody can come and maybe uh, alter it. Number, the most important for me is a frictionless and secure transfer. So you can transfer these securities to other people, so, which is virtually impossible to do with traditional methods, traditional technologies, uh, because you always need to have some sort of a centralized authority to, to uh, approve of this transfer, and it's complicated and so on. So a frictionless transfer is possible with blockchain. And number three relates to number two, is trade. You can list it on blockchain-enabled exchanges, so then you can actually trade freely between securities on the secondary market. So this is why we need blockchain. So to recap, tokenization takes the rights of an asset, converts it to digital tokens, which now can be traded. So why would anybody tokenize an asset? I'll give an example from the real estate market, because Solid Block is the leader of tokenization in the real estate market. Uh, what are the main problems faced by real estate investors? Well, there is a big, they have to put too much money down, it's a down payment, they cannot access great global deals, and the biggest one is once you put money in, you can't take it out until you know, the project has entered the stage in which the dividends or the, or the profits are distributed, right? So, so what the, how does blockchain help? Well, number one, it enables a fractional investment. You can put as much money down as you want. Maybe there's a minimum amount, but without going to get a mortgage, you can technically invest in a real estate asset. You can access global deals and invest uh, easily abroad, and you can actually sell your investment to others through a secondary market. So, the advantages of digital securities include uh, regulatory visibility and compliance, as we discussed, efficient processes, um, and automatic, uh, automatic dividends and uh, transfers. Uh, this is a very complicated slide, but it's very interesting. Like, what, it, what is it? This is the whole map of actual digital security, if you look at it. So there is a smart contract that we developed, which is an ERC-20, and it basically has all of the attributes of this prospectus that you write. What is the investor entitled to? It's all coded over here. Now, it includes also legal and tax and compliance and valuation, market data. All of that is actually encoded in the smart contract. Now, the investors, the token holders, are getting the smart contract in their wallet, or they could be held for a custodian. And finally, you know, in order to tokenize, you usually create another legal entity, a special purpose vehicle, that is then broken down in parts, and then you issue a security that, that basically relates to these, uh, to parts of that entity, so it goes in there. And then people are getting their automatic dividends according to the smart contract. So this is basically, so this is basically uh, very, uh, elegant. This is basically the, the map of the security uh, of the digital security. I'm going to skip all this. This is a really cool slide because what you see here, what most people don't realize, is the potential that the tokenization will bring is not only to give access to people to great deals or let them trade. Just look at the ability to actually create possibilities for investors to go in at any stage of the process. Let's say you start building your asset here, or maybe you purchased an asset for renovation, and then you see the value goes up. But along the value, anybody can trade, so maybe somebody needs to you know, get some money, so they sell at below the price. Then somebody else comes and buys it, and, and, and then they sell at a higher price. And then there, you see all these fluctuations, and I think it will create some really cool use cases down the road, where you will see indexes of different tokens 
um, in the market. And, and uh, I think the sky is really the limit to this. Um, as a be best example of tokenization is a project that we did in Aspen, Colorado, um, called the Aspen Coin for a San Regis property, which raised $18 million. We're now doing other hotels uh, like Radisson and other St. Regis. So hotels is a great example and a, and a primary uh, type of real estate for tokenization because they always need to be renovated because you always can increase, almost always you can increase the profits through increasing occupancy and adding things. So, you know, and the value obviously goes up. So it's, it's a very um, attractive token, especially if you have a global brand like Marriott or St. Regis. Can I just ask a question? Yes. When you raise That's a great question because we actually what we do is we we ask uh, for for qualified appraisers, usually some big appraiser firm, to do valuation for the project specifically right at the time of issuance. What is it worth today? And that's uh, as much as we uh, as we raise for this specific project. This was the equity stake. So the bank actually did the appraisal. The bank gave 80 million, and the 80 million was raised according to the valuation. Now, uh, which was also verified by independent appraisers. Now, if there's a big problem actually in the IPO market, that before any IPO happens, there's usually like a big investment like bank or like Goldman Sachs going in and, and giving the company or buying company stock at like 20% discount to finance this whole IPO because that costs a lot of money, right? And then at IPO, they sell their stock at a higher price, right? And that's what we always see. We usually see some price drop after the IPO, like it happened with Facebook and others. So if you think about, you know, it's kind of unfair to the investors, right? And that Goldman Sachs is making a lot of money from these type of transactions. So in this case, we make sure the valuation is right on point. And then every year, we request from every project to submit uh, a valuation update. Can I chime in there on just a uh uh, add to, to Yale's answer. Um, the more illiquid something is, typically the some at time, depending on what the asset is, the more you kind of have to, let's say, reduce the price in order to find a seller. It's harder to find a seller, there's less sellers in the market, etc. The more liquid an asset is, publicly traded stocks, that's why there's, there's that gap that you were talking about, the closer to its real value you will find, because if you can actually walk into a store and buy it, or onto a public market and get it, then you know you'll buy it for it's like let's say real face value. The more that this becomes more prevalent, you'll see uh, a, like a slight change in the way that art is being sold, the way that real estate is being sold, as more liquid asset, like illiquid assets, become. Okay. And uh, because I promised that this is going to be about the future of money, um, we're going to do a really, really quick another quick quiz on on the topic. So what is money? Um, can anybody chime in on the three main attributes of money? Yeah, so stable value, annual exchange, uh, <laughs> unit of account, Perfect. and fungibility. Perfect. So um, a lot of people in the in the crypto industry are often opinion that the store of value is basically a load of crap because you know the government took the dollar of the gold standard, so now money is basically a form of loan. It's a loan uh, or some sort of IOU that the government gives you. And because of the inflation, um, you know, people are looking for all kinds of solutions to store their money in, right? So in general, most people store their money or store their income in assets, right? Such as real estate, art, bonds, stocks, and things like that, right? So, uh, and why do people need actual money? You know, what you think about is a unit of exchange basically to buy stuff, right, or to pay, to pay and to get paid. That's why you need money as most people think about money, right? They think about assets and they think about money. So. Two minutes. Yes, Sorry. perfect. Sorry. So when assets are highly liquid, need for cash-like asset decreases, right? So what are cash-like assets? Things that you can sell quickly, maybe stocks and bonds fairly liquid assets. A house is normally not a liquid asset. It's not considered a liquid asset because it may take three to six months to sell. It. So uh, when we have liquid real estate, potentially a mar good market of real estate, when you can put your asset on the market and get it sold quickly, 
you know, the, the need for putting money in the bank and other things like stocks and bonds that are more risky is going to decrease. So, that's what I wrote. Media of exchange will be chosen according to tech platforms. So maybe we will not pay in dollars. Maybe there's going to be Libra. Maybe there's going to be, uh, maybe Amazon's going to have, likely, uh, its own currency. Uh, and, you know, Google is going to have its own currency. How do we choose? Well, maybe when we go out and we go to buy Google, you know, the stuff on Google Market, we, we pay with Google Coin. Amazon, Amazon Coin, there's really no difference between them. Maybe why? Uh, why people will care? What kind of services they offer? Maybe they'll offer you some sort of an interest to store it even, let's say, on Facebook. If you put it on Facebook, you'll get some interest, right? So they're going to fight for storing your money. And stable coins, we like stable coins be because likely, they, if they're not tied to a US dollar, they're less likely to depreciate, right? So that's what I think about the future of money. Thank you guys. If you have any questions? Woo! Questions? Oh, questions? Were any the questions? Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you were one of the first to successfully managed to digitize or securitize over the um, a real estate asset. Right. Um, most recently, I think it was just about 